where we're going to talk more about complete systems of neighborhoods of points and then also we're going to talk about a neighborhood space so let's let x t be a topological space so all that means is x is a set and then t is some bunch of subsets of x that satisfy some special properties to call it a topology and let's let little x be an element of the set x and so I've done some videos already about neighborhoods and complete systems of neighborhoods, so you should definitely go and watch those videos before you jump into this one. But just to recap a few of the relevant definitions here, recall that n is a subset of x. We'll call that n a neighborhood of little x if there exists an element of the topology, O, such that x is an O, and O is completely contained in n. So a neighborhood doesn't necessarily have to be open, right? But we're trying to say that a neighborhood of X, it's a set that contains X and also contains an open set containing X. And then another thing that we've defined so far, if you've been watching these videos, is the set of all neighborhoods of X is called the complete system of neighborhoods of X. And the notation that I'm going to use and I've been using is this fancy N, kind of looks like an eta, this fancy N sub X. And again, the subscript X just indicates, you know, we're talking about neighborhoods of that point. So if we're talking about neighborhoods of two, you'd see a two down there on the real line. So the new thing, let's let N, fancy N without a subscript, be the set of all complete systems of neighborhoods for points in my, in my uh, set X. So what we'll do now is we'll say that the pair, the set X with N, we'll call that a neighborhood space. And so uh, there's some connections between what a neighborhood space is and what a topological space is. And I won't go too much into the details of it though, but uh, if you have a topological space, then naturally you get a neighborhood space. And I'll talk more about what that is in a minute because you should have no idea. But then also if you've got a neighborhood space, uh, it turns out once you define what it means to be open in a neighborhood space, uh, it'll give you a topological space. And uh, the constructions of both of those things, you end up having um, the same object, if that makes any sense. So what is this though? This is a way to say that for each point in the space, there's a corresponding element, there's a corresponding you know, complete system that contains all the neighborhoods of X. So if you've got a point, what I can also do is tell you about all the neighborhoods of X simultaneously. So all this is is just kind of a way to capture that information, to write that down. And let's do kind of a silly non-mathy example just to try to get an idea of what we're trying to do here. Let's say X is just a list of projects or jobs to do around the house. And let's think of fancy N as just the list of all the tools that we have at our disposal, right? Like I don't necessarily need all the tools to do a particular job, right? But if I've got a job like sweep the floor, if little X is sweep the floor, then I wanna be able to go and get my tools that I need to sweep the floor. And so in my toolbox in N, I can just go grab N sub X, which is the broom and the dustpan, right? So for that particular job X, I just need these things uh, in order to do it, right? So like for that particular element X, I have say this system of neighborhoods. Again, I don't, who knows what a system of neighborhoods is for a house project. I'm just trying to get you uh, comfortable with the fact that we're relating an element of a set to some subsets of the set itself. And then just another example, if Y is an element of X, if Y is build a house or build a birdhouse, then maybe the tools you need for that are a hammer, nail, saw, broom, and dustpan, right? So you can go to your toolbox, the whole toolbox is just N, and you can reach in and get the tools that you need for that particular job. So that's what we're trying to capture here. And so a neighborhood space is kind of a nice framework to describe what you might call like local concepts. So like concepts that you need to check at a particular point, like near a particular point. And uh, so far, if you're in topology, there's a chance that you've probably had like real analysis or maybe even complex analysis. So if I think about, say, the complex numbers, and uh, the complex numbers form a neighborhood space where let me tell you about what it means to be a neighborhood. So like, what's it mean to be in, in fancy N here? Given a particular complex number, Z, Z naught or Z sub zero, I guess it's easier for me to say Z naught. So what, what's a neighborhood of Z naught? That's what I'm gonna tell you. So to be a neighborhood of Z naught, what does that mean? There should exist some positive real number epsilon such that the set of all complex numbers um, pretty much whose distance from Z to Z naught is less than epsilon, remember that's the modulus of the complex number, uh, that this should be completely contained inside of N. And I've got a picture too that kind of helps see what this is. If you've had complex before, remember we're just talking about this is a circle that's centered at Z zero. And I should probably be more careful, it's really a disk 
that's centered at Z0 because I get the inside. So I've got a little picture here, right? So to say that this, this orange N is a neighborhood of Z0, that means you should be able to find some little disk that fits completely inside of it that contains Z0 as well. So that's what we'll do to say that N is a neighborhood of Z0. And so what do I want to do? I just want to take some things from complex analysis or even kind of the corresponding ideas in real analysis that I, I think you're familiar with already and just say them to you with this new terminology, this new terminology of a neighborhood space. So one that I think we're probably familiar with is a function from C to C is continuous at a particular complex number if what? Well, for each neighborhood of f of z0, there should be a corresponding neighborhood of z0 such that when you plug in all the points in that neighborhood into your function, the output should be completely contained inside of m. All right, so I've just taken the concept of continuity that you've probably seen before with like epsilons and deltas, and I've reframed it in a way that only depends upon just neighborhoods of a particular point really neighborhoods of two particular points, z0 and of f of z0. And another one that might be uh, worthwhile to write down is maybe a function from c to c is analytic at a particular z0, at a particular complex number z0, I guess I was going to say. Uh, what does it mean to be analytic? You probably remember this. That means that f is complex differentiable, not only at z0, but in some neighborhood of z0. And so the way that I'll say that, though, is that f is differentiable uh, in some n that is inside the complete system of neighborhoods of Z0. So you can find somebody in the complete system for which F is differentiable at all points inside of there. So again, we can kind of use this framework and this terminology in order to uh, you know, rephrase uh, some of these things so that maybe they're not on the surface, they don't look like they're, as in de they're, they're not as dependent perhaps on like a metric maybe that you have, right? And that's kind of a theme in topology is to kind of move away and abstract from like this notion of distances and whatnot and let's just talk about can we talk about neighborhoods maybe a little bit more generally here and so this kind of pushes us in that direction we're only talking about things in terms of neighborhoods and not necessarily applying or appealing to like the the idea of a distance on the surface anyway